الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ودائيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا ومن احسن قولا مما دعا الى الله وعمل صالحا وقال انني من المسلمين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين استفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد الف لام را تلك ايات الكتاب المبين ان انزلناه قرانا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون نحن نقص عليك حسن القصص بما اوحينا اليك هذا القران وان كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين إذ قال يوسف لأبيه يا بتني رأيت هذا شر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لساجدين قال يا بني لا تقتص رؤياك لا يقتك ويقيد لك قيدا إن الشيطان للإنسان عذب مبين وكذلك يشتبيك ربك ويعلمك ما تابي للأحاديث ويتم نعمة وليك وعلى لياقوب كما تم على بويك من قبل إبراهيم وإساق إن ربك عليم حكيم لقد قان في يوسف وإخبت آية للسائلين إذ قال ليوسف وأخو أب ولابين منا ونحن أصبا إن عبان لفي دلال مبين صدق الله العلي العزيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم وقال تبارك وتعالى في قران المجيد انه من يتق ويصبر فان الله لا يضيع اجر المحسنين وقال تبارك وتعالى في قران المجيد اني رايتهم احد اشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رايتهم لساجدين قال يا بني لا تقتص رؤياك لاخبتك فيقيد لك قيدا ان الشيطان للانسان عدو مبين صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الا ان في الجسد لمضغاه اذا سلوى سلوى الجسد كله واذا فسد فسد الجسد كله الا وهي القلب او قال كما صلى الله عليه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد او قال كما صلى الله عليه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم دير ار 114 surah in quran majid and out of those 114 surah there is one surah which is completely dedicated to one story and that surah is surah yusuf this is the only surah in the quran that is completely dedicated and completely talks about one story that is the story of yusuf alayhi salam and uh, when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam lost his wife khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anhu uh, that was the year of amul hazan that is the year of sorrow and also abu talib also left during that time the quraish the quraish of the makka used to bother rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam a lot at that time and uh, 
the shield of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that was his uncle abu talib also left the world at that time uh, the quraish met some jewish scholars and uh, the jewish scholars told the quraish that uh, asked rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did he know anything about joseph and uh, he claimed to be prophet what does he know about the joseph and listening to this the quraish thought that they got something to ridicule and make fun of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, they went uh, to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, they asked him about uh, joseph that is yusuf in arabic so their intention was to ridicule and make fun of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, and then the words from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam laqad qana fi yusuf wa ikhwatihi ayatul lisailin this words came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that these people are talking about yusuf and uh, then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal the story of yusuf alayhi salam to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this was uh, during the last time of the makka period and this was the last year in makka and after that this rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam left left uh, makka and went uh, migrated towards madina and uh, the story teaches lot of things lot of things and there are lot of similarities between the life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, the story of yusuf alaihi salam some of the similarities i would like to highlight is uh, the first similarity is that um, yusuf alaihi salam was bothered by his brothers uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was bothered by quraish yusuf alaihi salam left his house that is he was thrown out of his house similarly uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has to leave uh, makkah which he loved a lot and um, also yusuf alaihi salam saw dreams and uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam also saw some dreams uh, when he used to go to warisor for the worship of allah subhanahu wa taala he used to see dreams which became the reality so those were the things and there are many other similarities between the story of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, yusuf alaihi salam uh, one uh, last i would like to highlight is that during the last time when uh, yusuf alaihi salam brothers came to yusuf alaihi salam and uh, when they said to yusuf alaihi salam that uh, salam told his brothers لا تسريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم وهو رحم الرحيمين you don't have anything you have done nothing wrong لا تسريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم وهو رحم الرحيمين الله is very merciful and he made his brothers feel that they have done nothing wrong and he has nothing against them and similarly when uh, after the fath makka when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam got the makka back then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were around 2000 prisoners and after the tawaf rasulullah uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam went towards the prisoners and uh, that uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked the prisoners what do you think i would do to you and those prisoners said that you are a good man and we hope good from you and uh, so then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the same thing which rasulullah said i will say the same thing which you, uh, the brother of yusuf said to yusuf alaihi salam la tasriba alaykum al yawm yaghfir allah lakum wa huwa arhamur rahimin that you, i have nothing against you and um, some people some sahaba thought of getting their houses back which they left after leaving the makkah uh, at the time of fath makkah they thought they will get back but rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam made it clear that we are not going to take the houses back or we are not doing anything 
and um, they had nothing there so after the fateh makka rasulullah and his uh, sahaba uh, were, were going back to the madina and then the people of the makka said that why are you leaving and you should stay here but rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, in a lighter mood that you have already taken our houses how we can stay so and they, he left from there and he went back to madina but the thing is that that he did not have anything against his uh, against the people of makkah similarly yusuf al islam did not had anything against his brothers and the brothers uh, presented some things to yusuf al islam which he also returned and when they went home and they saw the same things little uh, jewelry type things and they say it uh, yusuf has returned in their item also so the similarities were lot and uh, the story of yusuf al islam is a very very ahsanul qasas story not no other story that allah subhanahu wa taala calls ahsanul qasas the best story uh, like the best story in the quran and uh, coming towards the hierarchy in which yusuf al islam came in this world he was uh, the gr- uh, great grandson of ibrahim al islam and uh, ibrahim al islam had uh, two son that is uh, ismail and ishaq and from the sons of ismail al islam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came and from the sons of uh, ishaq al islam uh, yaqub al islam was the son of ishaq al islam and uh, yusuf al islam was the son of yaqub al islam and from there lot of prophet kings like harun al islam musa al islam idris al islam shoaib al islam and zakaria al islam yahya al islam then isa al islam there were lot of prophets uh, from the son of ishaq al islam and um, so the father of uh, uh, yusuf al islam was yaqub al islam and yaqub al islam uh, was a prophet so there are around like uh, 20 prophets uh, from uh, mentioned in the quran and uh, uh, in those 20 prophets most of the prophets are from the sons of ibrahim alaihi salam and lut alaihi salam was the nephew of ibrahim alaihi salam and uh, this was the family in which yusuf alaihi salam was born that his father was uh, yaqub alaihi salam his great grandfather was ibrahim alaihi salam coming towards the birth of yusuf alaihi salam ibrahim alaihi salam was born in iraq babylon then he traveled he went to syria he went to uh, makka he went to but many places for the dawat purpose but finally he came and settled during his last time in hebron which uh, is uh, between sham and philistine and uh, at present it is uh, in uh, west bank and mostly muslims live there and uh, there the grave of ibrahim al islam is there and uh, after uh, his grave was there but during the turkish empire they made the mosque there which is called masjid ibrahim today also and and uh, that masjid is built above the grave of ibrahim al islam allah knows best but these are the stories and uh, then ishaq al islam and his wife have also grave in hebron and then uh, yaqub al islam and uh, in bible the n- name of the wife of yaqub al islam is rachel which comes as rahil in arabic and uh, from the son yusuf al islam was born there and the business uh at that place was uh, mostly goat business or poultry 
or sometimes they used to cut the skin of the sheep and make woolen clothes and then men used to travel to different places and sell those things those were the local business uh, that was happening there at that time and uh, today also if we go and see that place it has lot of influence of prophet prophets because lot of prophets have lived there and uh, so when yusuf alayhi salam came and yusuf alayhi salam uh, from a very small age yaqub alayhi salam understood that yusuf alayhi salam is uh, special when yusuf alayhi salam told his father yaqub alayhi salam about his dream is ra'aytum ahda ashara qawqaban wa shamsa wal qamara ra'aytum li sajidin that uh, when it told his father about his dream and he told him that i saw a star and 11 stars and they are doing uh, they are going in front of me and i saw this kind of dream then qala ya bunayya la taqsud ruyaka ikhwatika wa yaqidu laka qaida inna shaytana lil insani adubun mubin yaqub alayhi salam said that la tasbib ali that la taqsud ruyaka la ikhwatika don't don't tell this to your brothers and he did not said that your brothers are your enemy and yaqrul فيقيد لك قيدا ان الشيطان للانسان عدو مبين ان الشيطان للانسان عدو مبين that shaitan is the enemy and shaitan can uh, put evil thoughts inside your brother so don't tell about your dream to the to your brothers and then when uh, when he did not told his brother about the dream but brother noticed that uh, we are 10 brothers and then also our father is ignoring us and he he is very caring and very protective towards yusuf alayhi salam and he is not that caring and protective towards us and brothers and uh, seeing this uh, the brothers discussed and uh, thought what we should do and some brothers suggested that we should kill yusuf and yahuda was little soft hearted and he said that we should not kill him we should just throw him somewhere some place and this were the thoughts they discussed among themselves and then they they were once they went with this intention they went towards the father and they said we go out and we uh, we enjoy why don't you send uh, yusuf uh, with us and uh, yaqub alayhi salam said to his sons that uh, that uh, i am fearful that uh, you will do something wrong to him and uh, then his brother said we are not his bad wishers we are his well wisher why don't you trust us why don't you trust us brothers and uh, they, uh, those uh, his sons of yaqub alayhi salam convinced him and then yaqub alayhi salam said even though you will not do something bad i am fearful that a wolf or might might eat him or something will happen to him that and those 10 brothers said we are 10 we can protect him we are not one or two we are strong enough to protect him and we will protect him send uh, yusuf with us and uh, so listening to all this yaqub alayhi salam became a soft and he told okay take yusuf with you uh, prophet uh, yaqub alayhi salam got con- convinced because he uh, His sons told him that Inna lahu la hafizun, Inna lahu la nasihun. We are his protectors. We will protect him. Uh, uh, listening to all this, Yaqub al-Islam got con- 
convinced and uh, that is why that is why hasad is something that that is very bad that is very bad and uh, in surah falaq that uh, we should ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa min sharri hasidin is a hasad wo allah protect us from the hasad of the hasidi who have hasad and uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said that don't hate don't hate on each other and uh, no one is a believer if they uh, don't talk to uh, someone for more than 3 days for more than 3 days three, till 3 days is okay but after 3 days if they are not talking to any believer they are the their iman is in a state of concern so this is very important that we should try to protect ourselves from the hasad this hasad which got into the brothers of yusuf alayhi salam that uh, they tried to harm him once uh, someone asked rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is the best human rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that best human is someone who is honest and has mahmul qalb baba asked what is mahmul qalb rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that mahmul qalb is someone whose heart is clean whose heart does not have any hate or bitterness against anyone in their heart that is mahmul qalb that person rasulullah said is the best human in quran there is not much detail about the story only the events which are giving some lessons have been mentioned but uh, in bible there is a much more descriptive uh, story of yusuf alaihi salam and uh, ulama like tabri and others have taken uh, things from the bible and which are not against quran they have taken those things and uh, coming from that when uh, yaqub alaihi salam gave permission next day they were leaving and yaqub alaihi salam came outside and yaqub alaihi salam uh, made a dua and then yeah, when they, they were leaving uh, uh, one of the brother picked uh, yusuf uh, on his shoulder and uh, Uh, uh taking the turns one by one each brother used to carry y- yusuf on his shoulder because yaqub alaihi salam was watching and when they went far and they were not visible uh, the brother throw yusuf alaihi salam from the shoulder down and they start beating him up and like uh, they were like very uh, badly beating him and seeing this yahuda and ruben also and uh, they they thought this is wrong and they try to stop them and then when they try to stop them the other brothers um, uh, became against uh, yahuda and ruben also and uh, seeing this things uh, the yahuda and ruben said uh, we should not kill him let's just throw him in the well or something and then they throw him when he was being thrown in the well he grabbed the corner and he was pushed inside he was and uh, he was holding the uh, ribbon that carry water from the well and they cut the ribbon from the up also and they went laughing they took his shirt also when they were beating and uh, yusuf al aslam said at least give me my shirt back and uh, this was uh, the state in which their brothers were in was very like hard hearted they were like their heart were become of like stone they cannot feel anything they they went laughing and uh, yusuf al aslam stayed in that well for 3 days and 3 nights and that well still at present it is there and that city is also called well of yusuf 
and that well of you so uh, he stayed in that for three days and uh, it is between syria and you go to palestine or egypt in that way caravan used to uh, go through that way well and use that well and uh, when they left uh, yusuf al salam did not uh, panic much he was calm because he allah subhanahu wa taala made him saw a dream in which he saw that he will get into a good condition getting out from here and this is the taqwa of what is taqwa one part of taqwa uh, that is fear of allah is also trust in allah you cannot fear allah if you don't trust allah and if you trust allah subhanahu wa taala then he will make way for you that was the uh, trust in allah subhanahu wa taala that yusuf alaihi salam had at that time and uh, when yusuf alaihi salam was inside that uh, he he knew he knew that he will get out from here and he was being very patient there and when the brothers reached home they they went there crying and they were like hypocrites uh, acting up so seeing this at first yaqub alaihi salam thought maybe some uh, some of the wolf might have eaten their sheep that is why they are crying they did not know that but when their brothers told that uh the wolf has eaten yusuf and they gave uh, they showed the shirt of yusuf alaihi salam uh, with blood and they got uh, his father uh, yaqub alaihi salam got fainted and next day he woke up and uh, next day he woke up he said waja wala qamisi bi dam min qazib qala bal sawalat lakum anfusukum amra that uh, how what a smart wolf and he has taken the shirt out and then he has eaten yusuf then i will have fasabrun jamil fasabrun jamil means sweet patience i will have sweet patience and i will have sabr in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he also said inna ma ashku wasi wa huzni ila allah wa alamu min allah ma la ta'lamun that i am putting my sorrow i am putting my sadness i am putting my grief in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will have a sweet patience and then he did not scold his sons he did not said anything bad he just went and um, obviously he was very sad at that time he was very upset with that but he saw the shirt and he saw the shirt and he understood that the these uh, sons are making story it's not the truth and there is something else and i should have trust in allah subhanahu wa taala that everything will come out good so he had that trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waja sayyaratun farsilu waridahum fa'adla dal dal wa qala ya bushra hadha ghulam wa asruhu bidha wallahu alim bima ya'malun then uh, a caravan came there and they put uh, inside the well uh, a bucket to put uh, the water out and yusuf al salam sat inside the bucket and came out and they said oh and they show amazement that what a beautiful young man came out and uh, brothers came from behind and said that uh, this is our slave who ran away and they sell him at a very cheap price and uh, they bought him and they said uh, try to sell him on the market of misr that is egypt and then from there when they went to uh, the person who bought him he said that we will make him our son maybe he will bring good in our life and uh, from there uh, yusuf al salam has to go lot of test uh, that he was sold sell as a slave and then from there then um, uh, a woman that uh, aziz e misr saw him and he uh, she fall in for the uh, yusuf al salam because of his beauty and then from there uh, she tried to do bad with him and then yusuf al salam um, uh, tried to run ran away from her and uh, yusuf al salam knew that the doors are closed i cannot get out and uh, i am stuck here but he did not thought that that uh, 
uh, what will happen and things like that. He only thought what he can do and he knew he can run away uh, towards the door. Rest is towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He went towards the closed doors and the doors one after another kept opening and it was not just a single door. It was uh, Zulekha that that is Aziz and Misr uh, took him inside his very um, a special room that has lot of doors uh, before coming into that room and then from there he ran away Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept opening the doors and then Zulekha uh, grabbed him from the back in that his, uh, his uh, shirt torn and uh, when his uh, when uh, when um, he got outside and uh, Aziz a Misr saw that uh, he's in, uh, she's in problem now. Uh, she tried to make up a story that uh, what would be the punishment for someone who tried to do bad to Aziz and Misr. And then Zulekha, uh, Zulekha claimed and uh, told that uh, he was trying to do bad with her. And then he was put inside the prison. And then Yusuf Al-Islam said that this prison is better than what uh, I was uh, being invited towards. This is a much better place for me here. Because Yusuf salam uh, had Then he went and he said, That uh, this uh, Prison is better for me. And then uh, he stayed inside, inside the prison and uh, he did not stop the work of Dawat. He gave Dawat about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He told about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside the prison. He told and invited towards uh, the oneness in the creation. That is oneness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside the prison. And uh, in prison, he, there were two prisoners whom he told the dreams. And in Musnad Ahmad, there is one hadith that uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there are three types of dreams. One dream is that, that is truth, that is being, um, uh, that dream comes to you by the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to guide you. And that is truth. And that is one upon 46 of the revelation that prophets get. That dream is very important and anybody can get that dream. And the second dream is that the things that are going inside your mind you will get uh, dreams according to that. And the third dream is from the shaitan. One person came to Rasulullah and told about a bad dream and Rasulullah said, you are not supposed to tell about th those, uh, these dreams in like this in public. So these dreams should not be told because these are the wasabis from the shaitan and then Yusuf also understood the dream so in Quran there are six dreams that are being talked about and there are being discussed out of those six dreams four are in Surah Yusuf and one is the, uh, the one which Yusuf saw the dream other two is the dreams of the prisoners and one is the dream of the king of Egypt and uh, and the two others are, one is by Ibrahim alayhi salam, that Ibrahim alayhi salam saw that he was uh, doing the qurbani, that is sacrifice of Ismail alayhi salam. He saw that dream. And other dream is the Hudaybiyah that Rasulullah saw doing tawaf. These are the six dreams that are being discussed. And Yusuf alayhi salam uh, tell the interpretation of dream to the prisoners also when they told about their dreams. And one of the prisoners was being released. And then Rasul, uh, uh, Yusuf Salam, Yusuf Salam said that, uh, go and discuss my case with your Lord. And listening to this, Allah got angry and he has to stay inside the prison for more time. Allah, because Allah wants, why didn't you said, uh, why didn't you said that you want to get out of the prison? Why didn't you tell me 
why don't you told discuss the case with my lord not your lord so this allah got angry because allah says we, uh, when you wanted to come inside the prison and being protected from doing something bad then you told me now you want to get out why are you not telling me and telling someone else so he has to stay more years in inside the prison for doing this and then after some time when a king saw the dreams he saw seven uh, seven weak uh, cows uh, approaching towards the uh, strong cows and weak cows were not good looking cows and when he saw the about this dream there is much more description that is being told in the bible that says that what happens uh, all the things that king saw in the dream and but the lesson is that when yusuf alayhi uh, salam told the interpretation of the dream that he will get 7 years of like no good harvesting and then after 7 years he will get a good year and a uh, lot of people uh, said that this is no no dream but yusuf alayhi salam when he told this dream interpretation to the king the king got very happy and he made him the minister of agriculture and he also uh, cleaned him from the uh, the thing which zulekha did on him and zulekha confessed that uh, uh, i was the one who invited towards the bad he is very nice and he has done what is truth honest and he has been a virtuous person and uh, he was being released from the prison from there and then from there uh, yusuf alayhi salam good time started and yusuf alayhi salam and uh, a lot of years passed by and then uh, yaqub alayhi salam and his son went into very bad state financially they were, they were in a lot of problem they did not have much to eat and uh, with this intention they approach the king uh, for some help for some help and when he they reached there and uh, uh, they reached uh, to meet the governor of the misr they did not know that uh, they did not know that uh, uh, about yusuf alayhi salam and they did not try to know where he is what he is doing they were not like concerned about anything they were only concerned about their problem and um, when they reached there and um, they told uh, they told uh, when they reached there and uh, they asked when they when they asked uh, when they approach yusuf alayhi salam yusuf alayhi salam seeing them uh, recognized them but they were unable to recognize you yusuf alayhi salam uh, because uh, he changed also but uh, his uh, he was using something to cover his face uh, he used to cover his face and so they did not recognize but yusuf alayhi salam recognized him and uh, his one of the brother bin binyamin and he uh, yusuf alayhi salam uh, put something in his uh, bag and told that he was trying to steal him and he uh, put uh, binyamin uh, he uh, put uh, under custody uh, binyamin and they told that uh, and they to, when they told the brothers and brothers got panic and they got lot of stress because last time also his father knew that they have done something to yusuf and now about binyamin and they they went home and they told everything to yaqub alayhi salam and then yaqub alayhi salam wrote a letter to the uh, the governor of the uh, uh, egypt that is misr and when they wrote the letter and when yusuf uh, yusuf alayhi salam saw the later he got tears in his eyes and he was like um, he he was very very sad and uh, uh, he 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 knew that uh, his father has written this letter and he told his brother uh, brothers that you should bring your father also with uh, you and then uh, allah subhanahu wa taala made his dream come true and all the brother uh, came and uh, when he removed the face covering uh, then his brothers asked him asked him qal wa inna galana ta yusuf are you yusuf our brother qal ana yusuf haza akhi yes i am your brother yusuf qal ana yusuf haza akhi qad manna allah alayna innahu man yattaqi wa yasbir 
wa inna allaha la yudhi wa jal muhtini that whoever have sabar and taqwa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always will always be with them will always never let them down will never let them down this is the lesson that uh, taught him is abu bi qamisi hadha falqu ala wajhi abi ati basira wa atuni bi ahlikum ajma'in that um, that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a lot of blessing yusuf alayhi salam also said la tasriba alaykum al yawm yaghfir allah lakum wa huwa arhamur rahimin and the brother tried to like say that we have done so much wrong and we are like we were very apologetic and he said la tasriba alaykum al yawm you have done nothing wrong i have nothing against you all and uh, that uh, he did not hold anything against so much years of um, uh, hardship he had been through because of his brothers but he was like uh, more than forgiving he was welcoming towards his brothers and this is the lesson la tasriba alaykum al yawm that i don't have anything against you all brothers and then uh, yusuf alayhi uh, salam met his father and then allah uh, they did uh, sajda uh, that is going and then like uh, his dream came true then this the lesson of surah yusuf are very important and the first lesson is that whoever have sabr and taqwa allah subhanahu wa taala will always will always will always give them glory and success in life and uh, wherever they are in any situation if we have sabr and taqwa allah will always guide and the second thing is qala bal sawalat lakum anfusukum amra fa sabru wa jamil wallahu al musta'an wa la ma tasifu that asallahu an ya'tini bihim jami'a inna huwa al alim al hakim what yaqub alayhi salam showed when he had that sorrow he did not complain qala inna ma ashku basi wa huzni ila allahi wa alamu min allahi ma la ta'lam that i i only complain about my problems my sorrow only to my rab only to my creator this was uh, this was what yaqub alayhi salam taught that he complained that he shared his grief only to the creator and he had patience with sweetness fa sabru wa jamil that the sweet patience that he showed that is very important that we should have in life this is the lesson of surah yusuf other lesson is that one who has fear what is taqwa one who has taqwa also trust allah subhanahu wa taala also has tawakkal when yusuf alayhi salam was inside the prison he was having taqwa but at the same time he was having trust in allah subhanahu wa taala when he was in well he had that trust in allah subhanahu wa taala when he was in front of zulekha when she was trying to do bad with him then also he had trust in allah subhanahu wa taala that having a trust uh, in allah subhanahu wa taala comes from the fear of allah subhanahu wa taala this is the alamat of having fear in allah subhanahu wa taala that we will have trust in allah subhanahu wa taala that he will bring good into our life that if we have if we follow the commandments if we live our life how allah wants to live then no matter what happens no matter what anyone says no matter how much people put uh, blame and no matter how many conspiracies people try to make against us nothing will harm us nothing will harm us only if with uh, only by the will of allah subhanahu wa taala anything happens in this world this is the lesson of surah yusuf that we should try to bring in our life and uh, sabar also we have to understand what is sabar sabar is not getting provoked sabar is waiting sabar is not taking revenge sabar is not uh, abusing sabar is not getting angry these are the things that make sabar if we think we are having sabar and we are we are anger angry we are complaining we are uh, we are hateful and we think we are having sabar then we don't understand the real meaning of sabar sabar means not getting provoked not getting angry waiting and sabar is that is what fa sabrun jamil the sweet patience is that uh, without any complaint without any any hatred or bitterness with full tawakkul in allah subhanahu wa taala waiting for good things to happen waiting in the face of hardships 
waiting in the face of sorrow and grief that is when when hardship comes then the real potential of person comes out one of the purpose of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us into hardship is to bring out the hidden potential inside of us that is one of the purpose why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send hardship for us so that our hidden potential comes out so allah wants best for us that is why he uh, bring hardship in our life that maybe out of hardship we will come towards the right path idina sirat al mustaqim that sirat al mustaqim that we will come by the hardship that is the why allah subhanahu wa taala send hardship and whoever whoever on the face of hardship show sabr and taqwa allah subhanahu wa taala will always give them glory and success hard is the gateway to soul and the gateway to heart is eyes that is why we see rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that there is a flesh of meat in your body if it is right everything is right if it is bad everything is bad and that is qalb ala wa hiya al qalb that is heart so how heart gets dirty heart gets dirty by obsessions every human i see is in some sort of obsession and i am not talking about the obsession that is bad even if we are obsessed towards something that is good that will also creates a wishful thinking i want i i wish i want that kind of thinking will deviate us from logical thinking wishful thinking and logical thinking does not go together so when we have wishful thinking we cannot have logical thinking and when we cannot have logical thinking we cannot have sabr 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 is very important but for having sabr sabr we need to have logical thinking we can only have sabr if we think logically and we think and we think that what is the benefit of having sabr that is why sabr is stress upon a lot in the quran and similarly in the story of yusuf alayhis salam the conclusion is innahu may yattaqi wa yasbir fa inna allaha la yudhi ajran muhsini whoever has sabr and taqwa will get ajr azim from the creator and how we can have sabr and taqwa in our life for that first of all we have to we have to guard our heart we have to guard our heart in order to guard our heart we need to guard our eyes one of the best lesson from this yusuf uh, alaihi salam life is that no matter how bad is our situation no matter how many problems we have no matter how big is our hardship we can turn the worst into the best story we can turn turn the worst situation into a best situation how only by the fear of allah and by sabr only by that and these stories these stories are not just allah say laqad qana fi qasasihim ibratu li ulil albab ma kana hadithan yuftara walakin tasdiq alladhi wa tafsil kull shay wa hudan wa rahmatan li qaumi yu'minun that these stories are for the guide these are not just the tale you are listening and it is something that happened before us it is something that happened before us and it has lot of guidance in these stories and it will certainly give us guidance and uh, lead us to the path of mercy and goodness so we have lot of things that we can learn from this story may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to follow the good things and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to live uh, the path of uh, sabr and taqwa and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to bring these good qualities like yusuf alayhi salam into our life wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin